Hi, this is Mrs. Bustamante. Today we're going to talk about 7.5, which is indoor air pollutants. Um, so we're going to identify a lot of them and talk about how some of them are classified um, and then that some of them come from natural resources, some of them are man-made sources, some of them come from combustion, um, some common sources of indoor air pollutants including radon and mold and dust. And some of those common uh, man-made ones that we talk about, where do we find them, where do they come from. We talk a lot about radon-222 um, and how it can come into your home and influence your air pollutants that you might experience within your home and why it's so important to monitor it and make sure it doesn't um, reach a higher level than has been deemed safe, if you will. Um, so... Why do we care about indoor air pollutants? Well, we spend a lot of time indoors. There's not as much air circulation, right? So they really influence uh, our lives, right? In a single year, a six-room house collects an average of 40 pounds of dust, um, which can be laced with anywhere up to, it says, 45 toxic chemicals. Water damage is the most common destructive problem a homeowner can face. Asthma is the leading cause of chronic uh, disease in children. 28% of American homes are rated unhealthy, report problems with mold and mildew and rot, and people spend nearly 90% of their time indoors, um, which is where, according to the EPA, pollutants can be two to five times higher than outdoor levels. And women who work from home every day have a 54% higher death rate from cancer than those who work outside of their home. Right? So because we spend so much time in these different places, right, we get exposed to different things. And hence, it's really important that we pay attention to a lot of our indoor air pollutants. So one of the big ones to talk about is radon. Radon is actually a naturally occurring gas. Um, we're going to spend a couple more times on the slide talking about it here. But here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't experience this too much. Another naturally occurring air pollutant is mold. Uh, it can either be airborne spores or you can actually physically see it, right? And then dust. All of those are naturally occurring. These aren't anthropogenic causes. They aren't things that humans necessarily add. So let's talk a little bit more about radon. Radon-222 is the most stable isotope is a half-life of approximately four days, and it's actually a naturally occurring radioactive gas, and it gets produced um, by the decay of uranium found in rocks and soil, so typically way down under the ground, right? And as it breaks down, we get radium and then radon and eventually radon, and as that radon is a gas, it can enter into our homes and pose some risks, right? So typically it moves up through the soil and enters homes via the basement. So oftentimes this is something in the Midwest, for example, they'll test a lot in your homes, uh, particularly because they have basements, right? So they're underground, they're more likely to be exposed to that radon gas, and they'll measure the levels of radon there. So if you find that you have too high of a level of radon, you can actually add some um, devices to your home to kind of re-rate the gas out of it and help vent it so it's not building up in your home. We don't experience this too much in the Northwest, um, though it's not something we typically look for in homes, maybe older homes, but not as much as other places in the country. So it can move up from the soil, enter your basement, or in cracks in the walls. Um, it dissolves in groundwater, and that can enter the home too through a wall or other places. So basically it, it creeps in. It's a gas, right? So it's going to go wherever it can, where it has space, right? Um, so it's measured in a picocurie per liter. And of course, like everything, there's amounts that have been deemed, you know, safe to be exposed to. Um, one uh, picocurie liter or PCIL is equal to 2.5 cigarettes per day. And the East EPA states that radon is the number two cause of lung cancer, only number only smoking is number one, right? So it plays a big deal. We're going to talk a little bit more about what we think it causes with cancer. 
The World Health Organization uh, recommends that you have no more than a level above 2.7. That's where you should start taking action. And then uh, the EPA's recommended rate on action level is actually at 4 PCIL. Uh, of this is the equivalent of 100 chest x-rays. And by the way, most hospitals will only allow a person to have four chest x-rays um, in a year. And this gives you that that value to compare to, right? Um, so there are normal levels, right? It's naturally occurring. It's going to be places. The problem is that we don't want to have too much exposure in a small confined area, right? So radon is actually the number one environmental cause of cancer deaths and the number two cause of all lung cancer deaths. Um, so because it affects the lung so much, we see that it's an especially dangerous combination if you're exposed to a lot of radon or high radon levels and you smoke, right, that can increase your risk of lung cancer by 10%, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so it's really important to know uh, what radon can cause and what its main uh, effect on human health is and that it can be monitored and that there are safe levels uh, that you can be exposed to.